let's peel it back. Oh, I love it. Look how cute that is. That's even better than I expected. Sometimes we amaze ourselves <laughs> with the stencils and with how the colors work out. Oh, it's perfect. Hey, this is Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils and today we are making a quick and fun statement piece for your home that you can change out with the seasons. All right, let's get started. We have three surfaces today because we are making a super fun fall set. I have already base coated my surfaces white. If you would like some tips on base coating basics, we have a video that we will share up above for you. There are definitely some tips that you'll want to know, including how many layers to base coat depending on what style of project you're doing and how to keep your edges clean. So even if you need a refresher, that's a good video to watch. I did four coats on these to make them really nice and white and bold. So we have our white surfaces and then we are going to add fun fall cutouts to our projects and make a fun set out of them. So we have our cutouts and we are going to paint different plaids on our cutouts in different colors to make them a nice coordinating set. And then we are going to paint some words with our stencil on the bottom. So what is our next step? We have our boards base coated. We are going to set them aside. So our next step is going to be base coating our cutouts. When we base coat a large surface, we use a poly foam brush. We have the, our original poly foam, and then we also have some new sets of foam brushes that we are really loving. We love the really big set for large projects. However, when you are base coating a cutout, we have found it is most beneficial to paint those with our jumbo dauber. So these are like a really dense sponge and they have a little spot for your fingers in the back. And these are easiest because when you use a brush or a large sponge on them, you run the risk of bleeding over the edge. When you are painting on a square or a really basic cut surface, you can clean up the edges pretty easily. However, when you get into something like this leaf, if you make a mess on the edges here where it is such a fine cut, you are gonna have a hard time cleaning it up. So we are preparing for this the easiest way possible. So the colors that we're using today, we used 27, which is our white on our base coat. We have a Studio R12 paint color guide. And so we paint with Sherwin-Williams paint. We paint in bulk. So we get, let me grab a large container. We get large containers of paint because we paint so much here. So what we've done is we made almost 80 colors the Sherwin-Williams paint, and they correspond with deco art color. So what our paint color guide does is it shows you if I have a number nine, it tells you what color number nine is with deco art. And then it also will give you the hex code if you wanna to try to find it online. So it's a really valuable tool if you like the colors that we're using and you want to paint something similar. Okay, so we are going to start with our dark orange. Our number nine is going to be the base for our pumpkin and our leaf. We're gonna shake up our paint really good. This is one that we've been using a lot lately. I can tell because it is not as full as some of the others. This is one of our favorite colors for fall. So we will pick up our jumbo dauber and we will put it in the paint and just like we do with our stenciling, we will come off and put a little bit here on the, on the paper towel. If you're base coating, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could come in and use the majority of the paint in the center of the project, but you will want to be mindful that as you get to the edge, 
where you could potentially bleed over that you don't want to start with a whole bunch of fresh paint on your dauber there so that it does not spill over. And this is just such a really easy, quick process. We love the jumbo daubers for this purpose. We also love them for stenciling really large areas. So if you have a project with a large pumpkin cutout or a large deer cutout and want to cover a lot of area fast, it's really easy to use the jumbo daubers for it. It will take forever to stipple and swirl inside those big areas. Okay, look how easy and quick that is. Super duper fun, super duper fast. Now, if you are wanting to do a really bright and bold surface, you will want to paint a light gray first and then paint your color over top of it. I recently did a video where we used orange as our background on a Halloween round. So I will share the link to that video so you can see why and when we would use those. It's really gonna be, depending on what color, you would want your surface. Oranges, yellows, reds don't seem to have as much pigment in them, so they don't necessarily have that pop that you might be looking for unless you paint an undercoat. And we always prefer gray over white. White will turn your red pink. All right, so those are quick and easy. This is actually a super quick project in general, even though there's a lot of steps to it. It does not take a long time to do. The drying and waiting for the drying of your base coat, I think is the, the longest, most tedious part. Now, <clears throat> something I just noticed, I was huh, holding on to this and because it is thin, my finger was getting into the paint. So <clears throat> you will want to be careful of that. We could grab a towel. Since these are small, they like to move around a little bit. So a, just a, a towel that we got from the Dollar Tree will be good to help keep it from moving around on your surface and to kind of help stabilize it. So look how nice and pretty that and bold that is. This is the difference between, let me move these in here to this camera, one coat of paint and two coats of paint. So it can definitely make a difference when you're looking at how many coats of paint you want to paint. I'm gonna come off here onto the paper towel just because this is a smaller surface and there's a lot more edges to potentially bleed under. Okay, I think we are done with the base coating of those. So when you are done with your jumbo dauber, you are going to grab one of your paint brushes that you're not using and stick the brush into the little hole where you put your fingers and then sink it in your water bucket. If you do not put a brush in it, it will float to the top and it will flip up so the sponge part is actually out of the water. And when you do that, that's when you ruin your daubers because they get dry. This one was not taken care of very well and is kind of crunchy. And you can tell that it was used to paint blue. So this one I don't think was placed in the water properly and you can tell. And if you take care of your sponges and your brushes, they will last you a really long time. However, if you do not take care of them, you are going to be buying them over and over again. Okay, so now it's time to do our little acorn. And with our acorn, we are going to base coat him white. And we have a, a fun different color pattern, color scheme we are going to use for him. So the pumpkin's going to be orange and the Leaf is going to be orange, and this guy's going to be white and green. Okay, so we are done with the Jumbo Dauber here. We have two layers of paint white, and we are going to sink this into our water bucket. So anytime that you use a stippling or a tapping method on your projects, 
you will have a little bit of a texture on your surface. If you don't like that, you can always take a really fine grit sandpaper and sand through it just to smooth it out a little bit. I do not mind it with this project. We're going to have some patterns on top of it, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Our surfaces are dry and we are ready to start painting patterns. So our first pattern we are going to do is on our pumpkin. My stencil is a lot bigger than my surface. If that happens, there is a chance that it can kind of pop up when you get close to the edges. So what we like to do is go grab another surface that's about the same thickness and you could put it all the way around. I'm just going to do it on the one side today. And then we are going to get our tape. And what this does with this extra surface is it kind of gives it a level playing field. I'm gonna tape my stencil down and I am going to tape it just here on the edge. And then once we get close to that edge, I'm going to move my tape. So I'm grabbing a dome brush. When we stencil, we love to use a dome shaped brush. We know a lot of stencilers like to use a flat brush. However, we have found that with a dome shape, the shape of the dome means only a little portion of the brush is actually hitting your project and it decreases your chances of bleeding under. So we're going into our white paint. We are coming to a paper towel. Every time we pick up paint when we are stenciling, we come over to our paper towel and we offload and then come to our project and start gently swirling. So something to think about when you are painting plaid is that you wanna think about the colors and will the colors go well over top of each other. I really wanted orange as my pumpkin base, but what that means is my plaid is going to be white and it is harder to paint white over orange than orange over white. So we're gonna have to work a little harder here to get this white to coat over top of our orange, a little harder than if we would have done orange over white. <clears throat> so we have one little layer done and you can see it has a nice little pattern, super cute. All right, come back into the white, and we are gonna come back to our paper towel, which you can't really see on the paper towel because it is white on white. However, you can always come to your hand with your brush and do a couple of light sweeps, and it barely puts anything on your hand. It's a really light dusting, and that's what we like to do with our stencils, is have a really light dusting, a light layer. You don't want to be able to see the swirl marks. If you can see the swirl marks, you need to go back to your paper towel and um, offload a little bit more. You just want it to be light and dusty and then that way you don't have wet goopy paint on your project. So now that I got one layer done, I know that it's going to take a little bit more to get this white to be really bold on my project. So I'm going to do a stippling motion. Stippling is great for coverage, however, it does increase your chances of bleeding under because you are using a lot more pressure than when you are swirling. So it might go a little faster, however it does have its risks. Oh, okay, so I taped down, but I apparently did not tape down good enough because my stencil just popped directly off of my project. That can be dangerous when you're stenciling. If your paint is wet on your project, then it can smear the paint if you move your stencil. So what I'm going to do is come into my um, blow dryer. I'm going to make sure this is really nice and dry before I put my stencil back on. 
I am going to take down a little bit better now. And I can also hold down on my stencil to prevent any movement. However, when that came off, did you see how pretty that plaid was? Now, one thing I did not think about that you may want to think about when you are doing plaids, especially something like this that has some big spaces, is to make sure you like what your plaid looks like on your project. So I noticed when this came off and I was looking at it that I have two to the two big areas here. And they kind of look like they're in the placement of an eyeball for maybe a jack-o'-lantern. So keep in mind, you know, hindsight's always 2020. If you don't like it, once you get done, paint is our best eraser. You can always sand through your project and sand back on the plaid and then base coat it again and base coat it in your orange and then move your plaid around until you like her. Maybe you decide that you don't like this plaid or maybe you decide you want to do the same plaid on all three. And then if that's the case, you can just paint it back and redo it. It is, it is maybe a little more time consuming. It is an extra step. However, we do want to love what we, what we are painting and how our project looks in the end. I am gonna need a little bit more white. So this is our 27 on our paint color guide. And notice I'm still coming to my paper towel every time that I add more paint. However, you can also notice, look how high up in the bristles the paint is. That is because when you are doing that stippling motion, you are pushing paint up into the brush. If I am doing a lot of stippling, I will change brushes throughout my project because when you get a lot of paint in the brush, it can also increase your chances of bleeding under because then it is a little bit more wet on your project. Now I need to remove this little piece of tape here and finish this portion. Something to keep in mind when you are painting. Anytime that you are coming to <clears throat> a harsh line on your project, we hate harsh lines. We hate the tape lines because they are hard to cover. There's a nice tape line right here through the center of my plaid, and it is going to take several layers of, my, of coverage for me to get that. So I need to hit the blow dryer because what I noticed is since I'm doing such a small area, I did a layer and did another layer and didn't let it dry between. So now what's happening is the paint is pooling away and we are digging a hole into our project. So let's dry our project, take a little breather, grab a drink of coffee, and then come back. When I was blow drying, Steve and I were talking about plaid being tedious. Plaid is very tedious. How many times have we talked about through this project about lining it up and painting it over? And then if you are doing it on a project, you'll have to maybe move it around and you do have to be careful because there's such little lines. If you mess up on a plaid project and get bleed under, it's a lot harder to fix than if you are painting words and get bleed under because if you have to get some water on your project where there's a plaid line, then you can almost guarantee most of those lines are going to get wet and then you will need to sand and rebase coat and all of that. However, plaid is tedious regardless of how you are applying it and the stencil makes the plaid a lot less tedious. Look at all the lines on this and all the cuts in different directions. If you would try to tape this off, I cannot even fathom how long it would take to get this. So plaid is tedious regardless of how you're painting it, but stencils make plaid so much easier. All right, let's pull this back and ta-da! Look how pretty that is. It kind of has a little boho vibe to it. I love the orange, I love the white pop. Love, 
the little eyeballs that we painted on here. Okay, so we are done with our pumpkin. I'm done with the white paint, so I'm putting my brush into the bucket. We have a video with brush cleaning tips, and you will definitely want to watch that because it will help save your brushes. So next we're going to move on to our leaf, and with our leaf, we are going to use a fun two-part stencil. I'm actually going to use it on both of these and show you the difference in a bold contrast versus a tone on tone. So we're doing tone on tone with our leaf. This is a gingham stencil and it has a part one and a part two. And so we will start with our part one. All of our stencils have a very light etching in the bottom right hand corner. It reminds you, you got it from studior12.com. And then it has the skew for the stencil. And this one, since it is a two part, says part one and part two. I always like to put this skew portion in the bottom right hand corner of my project so that if I have to move the stencil around, I know exactly the way my stencil was. Okay, so we are going to lay this down on our project and I'm going to show you, I'm not going to put the wood surface underneath it this time like I did on the last one and I'm going to show you how we would manage that. So I'm going to get my tape and I'm going to tape onto my table, which I'm already noticing when I tape onto my table, I have a little bit of lift in my stencil. You can see it kind of popping up and down and I want to show you what that can do to your project if you do that. So now I'm going into my light orange. This is number 40. So our oranges were number nine and number 40. And this is just like one step up. So it's just a little bit lighter. I didn't want to use a super bright palette on this project. If you guys have watched my videos, you know I, I love a, a boho vibe and a really neutral pattern. So once again, I'm coming to my paper towel. I have white on my paper towel from my last color that I did. I couldn't see it, so what I did was I wiped my brush off here and then I got into the white, which is going to cause my paint to get a little lighter. I'm gonna throw that paper towel away, get a new one. I'm going to wipe off as much paint as I can to kind of help neutralize the brush, get some of that white paint out if there's any on there, come back into my paint and start fresh. Okay, so we are ready to come to our project. I am going to go ahead and just start stippling because I know that my stencil is going to have a little bit of movement because I have it taped to my table and not to a surface that is the same height as my project. So I am going and I am holding every little square around the area that I am painting to try to prevent any movement that this might cause. Be mindful if this is the route you take which isn't necessarily the route we recommend, that you don't put your fingers on the portion of the project that has the openings. I have white paint on my finger and just stuck it into one of the holes and then there was a little bit of white paint on my project. And I had to stipple over top of it to hide it. So this project is definitely not taking very much time if I wasn't talking, it wouldn't take much time. So one thing that's tough about doing tone on tone is we're painting orange on orange and it is kind of hard to tell where did I paint my orange? So I am kind of looking over to make sure everything's about the same color. We're going to pull this stencil off and look, it has a cute little plaid. Isn't that adorable? I love it. And I'm actually, I'm not gonna use this second piece because if I did use the second piece, I think it's gonna cover up the areas that I want. And since I want it to be tone on tone, I am just going to leave this 
as is, no big deal. So now we have a checkerboard leaf. We have our pumpkin. And now we're going to go into our acorn. So we are going to use the same pattern stencil that we used to do our leaf. However, I'm going to show you the inverse side, showing you the, it'll have more space in the background area than what this one did. So we'll start with that and then we'll decide if we want to add another pattern on top of it. And I went ahead and picked two different colors for this, just in case we would decide to add more onto it. I originally had a number 58 pulled, which I think would look really pretty with this, but I didn't have a corresponding color. So I went ahead and grabbed 42 is a dark green and 43 is a little bit lighter and they look really pretty together. So let's look at what it looks like now with one layer of paint and that is super cute. We're gonna do one more layer and make it nice and bold. All right, let's peel this baby back. Ta-da, look how cute. We could do all of these in different colors and use the same plaid. I like having the different plaids, especially since we're going to do another overlay of this to show the different, so that is going to make it tone on tone, which is similar to our leaf. So just some things to keep in mind when you are painting these is to decide, do you want them to be in the same color palette? Do you want one to be bold? Do you want one to be tone on tone? And the beauty of these is you can actually paint each each side different. So then you could do tone on tone on all of them. You could do the same color on all of them and then switch them around. And we're gonna show you how to do that, stay tuned. So we are going to reuse our part one stencil. We love our stencils because they are washable, they are reusable. We have a video showing how to wash them properly and it's going to tell you why you want to wash them if you're using colors like oranges and reds before coming back onto a project. You'll also learn how to get glitter off your stencils. I am going to do a little test here and we will see how it goes. I don't have enough space on my stencil. If I would have been thinking ahead, I could have probably put the leaf over here in the corner and then use this other corner for the acorn. However, I didn't do that. So what I am going to do is I'm going to line this up. So when you are lining this up, we go into the plaid, so the squares that we've already painted are going to be the portion that is covered with our mylar, and the squares that we have not painted are going to be the ones that are open. So we're going to grab our tape, and what we might run into a little boo-boo with is that we have orange paint on the white background and sometimes that can cause problems with transferring that orange paint, even though it's dry, to our white background. So we're gonna, fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. If you have a lot of brushes, you can grab a new brush for our 42. However, this is a good time that if you don't have a lot of brushes, think ahead to your colors. So you could do these two with the same brush. You'll probably want to do the lighter one first and then the dark. You can also just wipe off your brush a whole lot and neutralize it and do it a couple of times to try to get as much paint out as possible. If you are using these two colors or if you are using an orange and a green, you're not going to want to use the same brush. But if you are using paint in the same color family, then you can use the same brush. And one of the things that is important for stenciling when we talk about using brushes is that we want our brushes to be completely dry. If our brushes are not dry and you are going into paint, the water in the brush is going to thin your paint and then that increases your chances of bleeding under. All right, so we're coming into here. We are going to stipple. So we have our 42, our darker color. I'm super excited to see how this turns out. 
Okay, let's do a quick peek to see how it looks. And ta-da, look how cute. I love that. You could leave it like that if you like the dusty layer, but I am going to show you what it's like to look a little more bold. We are going to use the blow dryer before I start digging holes in my paint again. Okay, three coats of green on our plaid. We want it to be nice and bold and let's peel it back. Oh, I love it. Look how cute that is. That's even better than I expected. Sometimes we amaze ourselves <laughs> with the stencils and with how the colors work out. Oh, it's perfect. I'm so happy with that. It's time for the next step. So the next step is going to be doing a little placement so that we can paint our little words underneath here. So you could leave these as is if you like a little bit of a minimalist project. I do have a project with black and white buffalo plaid on the back and then different projects that you can put on top of it for the different seasons and we'll link the video for that because it's a super fun way to switch things around and it's also something that you could do with this. So we are going to place these in about the middle. So we're gonna use our T-square, which is our artist's ruler. So you're gonna measure the space from the end of one letter to the end of the board. So this is just over three inches. And the space of the final letter to the end of the board, and it is three inches exactly. So we need to pull it over just a little bit. You are going to not necessarily be able to line up the middle portion of the letter with the word because the G has a lot, is a lot hardier than the, the rest of the word. So the G is kind of taking the place of two pieces here. And what I'm going to do for the bottom of the stencil, our stencils are laser cut. So I'm just going to line the bottom of it up with the bottom of this and that will help me be able to line them up across the board on the different projects. So I am using a grateful, thankful, blessed and I am going to leave this stencil together. However, you could cut it and make it fit there and that might help with the lining up. However, if you do that, then you might have to figure out a little bit of space in which they should line back up in the future if you wanna use it. But if you wanna use it on one in the future, it might be harder to put together than to leave as is. So we are taping on the left side here. I'm gonna tape up here in the corner. I'm gonna move this little guy here. And I am going to paint Grateful, Thankful, Blessed on all of these. And I'm just going to use Stencil Basics. We're using black number 28 on our project. I'm probably gonna do two or three layers. So I want it to be nice and bold like my colors. If you want to watch some Stencil Basics, we have a video for that. We are done with our stenciling. Steve, how long did it take? Eight minutes. Eight minutes to stencil grateful, thankful, blessed. I did three layers on all of them, two layers of swirl and then one layer of stipple just to get a nice bold look. It did not take long at all. I was not rushing, I was taking my time. I wasn't trying to beat the clock, but I did want to show you how quickly this can happen if you're just doing a really basic stenciling. It does not take very long and there's absolutely no way on earth I could have painted or written these words as beautifully as what they are stenciled. So now it's time to start to put together our project. We have our grateful, we have our thankful, we have our blessed. I think I want to change my acorn to the thankful so that if I put these in a row, we have orange, green, orange and a little bit of a contrast going to get out my handy dandy T-square again. And you can eyeball these. I kind of like the leaf tilted a little bit. So you can do a couple of things. You can measure it so that it is, let's say two inches above the tallest portion of the word. 
is where you could do it. So that seems a little high. So I'm gonna go one inch over the tallest portion of the word. Um, let's see. One inch over the tallest portion of the word. And then move this down a little bit. And then we want to make sure that it is even on both sides. So I have about three inches over here. I'm at five over here. So I need to move this over a little bit. So we have a little over three and a little over four. So we're still not quite even. All right, so now what do you do? You have a couple of different options. If you want to make this something that is permanent, that you do not change up, then you can use a glue, a wood glue or E6000, and just make sure you give them time to set and dry before you lift them up. I can't tell you how many projects we've painted in our video and then we've gone to take pictures of them and we lift them up and the glue isn't dry and the embellishment <laughs> just slide right down. It happens. So you want to make sure that it is really dried and cured before you move on. However, what I would probably do with this project is I would use command strips because it is going to give me the option to change it up for the seasons. So the video that I was talking about with the Buffalo plaid background that you could change, you could also do that with this and you could have little bunnies for Easter, you could have jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween, you could use a little gnome or something for the different holidays because Grateful, Thankful, Blessed is going to be something that you can keep up year round. And then you could just change out your embellishments. So how we would do our command strips is we cut them in pieces. We use a lot of them. That's how we hang all of our things on our walls is I'm going to get to, I'm actually going to cut this smaller because this is a smaller surface. So I'm going to cut these in squares and I'm going to keep in mind that this is already where I want it. So I'm going to lift up, lift straight up, put it underneath. Okay, I'm not gonna lift straight up. I'm going to lift up, I know where I want it. I will remeasure again. I know that there's about two and a half inches on each side and I'm just going to push down on that slightly so that it doesn't already really connect. I'm gonna set this on here lightly, make sure it's where I want it. It needs to go a little bit this way. And then we are going to crunch down. Nice, satisfying crunch. So then what this also does with using the command strip is it gives it depth. You have a little shadow now around your pumpkin isn't that cute? And then you can change it out with the seasons. So let's get these other ones added on here. Another way that you can add these, so when we are adding things to the wall, what we'll typically do is add the command strip to our project that we have painted. And then we will just, once again, lightly push it on there. Over here. Here. And then once again, push down and you have that nice satisfying crunch. One more. I am not a very good measuring pants person. I'm the one who has to ask Steve to come hang my things because I do not get out the level. I just plop it on there. I'm gonna turn this a little and crunch. So now we have a super fun three-part project. This can be a statement piece in your home. You can change it out for the seasons. You could even add a little black border around the white pieces if you want to just add a little something extra, but it's just something that's super fun and creative and a little bit of a different way to use your stencils on your projects. If you love this project and you wanna see more fun ways to use your stencils from studior12.com, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell so you'll be notified anytime we add fun new videos.